This is Dustin with DP Alternative Energy Designs with an update on the 2000 Jetta TDI, also known as the Jet High. Alright, so what you're looking at here in the trunk is a capacitor system that has replaced the battery for this vehicle. Now, the stock battery for the Jetta TDI is huge and heavy and is located normally in this position right here in the engine compartment where it occupies most of this space right here filling the engine compartment and taking up a whole lot of space space that I wanted to use for other things like cold air intake and some other future modifications you can see here that I retained the stock fuse box and remounted it onto the frame rail and then I ran this blue cable all the way underneath now normally when doing a conversion like this battery would be placed in a box right here and then uh, vented from the trunk to the outdoors but in this case I wanted to get rid of the heavy lead acid electrolyte filled battery and I wanted to go to a different kind of energy storage system being that I want to test out capacitor technology for my future EV project I wanted to see how the uh, capacitor bank concept would work so I've got six 2600 farad 2.5 volt Maxwell boost caps wired up taking the place of the battery and to keep the capacitors charged and topped off I have a small 12 volt lithium ion battery which can be seen right here it is hooked up to to the capacitor bank uh, through a fuse box just a little fuse terminal here the concept is that the capacitors can produce the required amount of energy needed to start the TDI with uh, no problems the drawback to having a capacitor bank is that it doesn't have the long-term storage capacity instead of just going with a set of caps and then hoping that the caps don't drain out making it impossible to start the car I also included a smaller lithium ion 12 volt battery and that battery also works in conjunction with this solar panel here now this solar panel this is a 7 watt solar panel which is wired directly into the vehicle's electrical system through the uh, cigarette lighter outlet right here which is always energized solar panel pumps in 7 watts of juice into this small lithium ion battery and capacitor setup to keep the capacitor fully topped off, charged, ready to go in the event that the car sits for any length of time. The vehicle has been sitting all day. It's currently at 13.1 volts. It's been sitting, it's been a sunny day. Just as an example, you can see I'm going to go ahead and start it. Let the glow plugs warm up. Give it a crank, you'll see the voltage dropped when I started it, and it'll immediately bump right back up again, It'll and it'll stabilize at about 14.4 volts. You can see it's up to 13, give it a little gas, 13 and a half. So the advantage of a capacitor bank is that they charge very quickly, it'll take a lot of current really fast. See, we're already up. The uh, stabilization voltage is 14.4, we're already up to 14.2, and uh, pretty soon it'll cap out at 14.4. So although the caps don't hold a lot of energy, they can take small amounts of energy at a very high rate, and they can release that energy at a very high rate, making them ideal for starting situations. So we've pretty much stabilized there. The diesel engine requires a lot of current for starting due to its high compression, which is why these vehicles have large batteries to start with. If I replace a large battery with a powerful cap bank such as this, that is able to produce several hundred amps instantaneously with no problem, you can reduce the need of having a large, heavy lead acid battery. Now the one that I took out of this vehicle weighed 45 pounds. The setup that you're looking at here that I have strapped down weighs about 10 pounds. So I've saved over 30 pounds of weight. Um, I've also redistributed some of the weight from the front to the back. One other advantage to this is because the, the capacitor bank charges so quickly, 
and doesn't hold as much energy density as a battery. It actually improves fuel economy by reducing the overall drag on the alternator over time. As you saw in the demonstration, the cap bank reaches its maximum voltage very quickly in a matter of just a few seconds, if not a minute or two. And after that, the only draw on the system is what's required to maintain the general electronics, the headlights, whatnot. What I'm saying is that in a normal condition, if you have a low battery, it's going to be drawing on your alternator for could be even hours before it's charged. In this case, it's only a few seconds, and then there is as little drag as possible. Like I said, the purpose of the battery, working in conjunction with the solar panel on the roof, is to make sure that my capacitor charge doesn't bleed off so that when the vehicle sits, I can still start it. And I can still run the radio and turn on the lights for about a half an hour or so before voltage starts to drop. Also here, as another alternative technology that's included in this project, is the hydrogen injection system. That what you are looking at here is the Smactanium Gen 4 Titanium MMO technology. Okay, and here's the flow path of the, de the design. So this design was featured on my old website. Now I've got some other videos on my YouTube channel that cover how this design works. No numbers on this system yet. I just installed it this week. I haven't even gone through a full tank. Normally a full tank of diesel fuel in this vehicle will get me about 450 to 500 miles depending on how I drive. But I also, many opportunities, tow this trailer. As you can see, the TDI has a hitch on it and that also affects my fuel mileage. The last technology that we'll be dealing with that I have not yet implemented is the uh, biodiesel. So hopefully pretty soon I'll get my biodiesel refinery system set up and we'll be running biodiesel instead of regular diesel in this vehicle. I have done an EGR delete. There is no EGR valve there. EGR is exhaust gas recirculation. It is mandated by the EPA and in many states you cannot pass inspection or get a registration without this device in place. I, In my state, we do not have an emissions check as long as the check engine light isn't on you pass your quote-unquote emissions test so in my state we are allowed to do this so long as the check engine light doesn't come on and with the uh, Rostec VAGCOM modification to shut off the EGR system that takes care of the CEL. The reason why I've deleted this system is because it became clogged to the point where uh, the hole going through the intake was about the size of my thumb. So here is the EGR valve and EGR cooler from the TDI and the first thing you can notice here real quick is the condition of the EGR valve so that's the hole that all the air from the engine was allowed to come through after all of this uh, carbonization and buildup and as you can see so like I said it's about it's about the size of my thumb all that air had to go through that little tiny hole you can see how over the years, how it's clogged up. It's all kinds of gunk in there, okay? And here's the race pipe that's replacing. Here's my original airflow, and this is the new airflow, okay? Considerable difference. Now, you cannot tell me that this is more efficient, that this, like the EPA is going to tell you, gives us less emissions and more economy. This takes away from economy. The engine is nothing but an air pump. And anything that restricts airflow or impedes airflow will result in less power and less efficiency. Now granted, it didn't look like this when it was brand new, okay? But it doesn't take too long for it to get like that. And so what you originally had for economy and emissions goes right out the window when you get this situation, okay? With the delete, this is always going to be this way. This is not going to crud up like that. It's going to stay like this for the rest of the life of the vehicle because I am not pumping sooty, dirty exhaust gases back into my nice, clean intake. I know what the reasons are for having the recirculation. It's just, in my view, there are other 
technologies like I've just shown, for example, the HHO system, that can help reduce the amount of particulates. It is proven. It is documented. There are plenty of emissions tests done by individuals using HHO systems and diesel applications all over the Internet, all over YouTube, people with emissions printouts that they've gotten at emission stations that show the market difference between HHO augmented systems and non-HHO systems and the reduction especially in particulates. This is particulates. This is carbon and sulfur and other crap and junk and there is some oil in there too uh, from the crankcase breather all mixed together. HHO injection helps reduce this. The main objective of an HHO system is not to increase your fuel mileage. It is to decrease your emissions while maintaining similar fuel mileage. I mean, the most I've seen, as I've posted, 20% is the most I've ever gotten out of an HHO system. Where it really matters and where it counts is right here where you're talking about emissions. And especially with diesel engines, the HHO systems have a more of an effect on a diesel engine than they do on a gasoline engine. It was absolutely ridiculous because there's a lot of soot in the... Uh, diesel exhaust and recirculating that back up through in the intake caused this whole intake runner system be to become unbelievably clogged, unacceptable in my view. There was a lot of smoke coming out the exhaust, significant decrease in power, so I know that was affecting my economy. I was getting a lower economy, higher emissions because of the clogging, so I completely deleted the system. So along with deleting the battery, I also deleted the air box and put in this uh, cold air intake system for my turbo induction uh, piping so that also will increase airflow and efficiency I've done the timing belt in preparation for some turbo upgrades I have added a few gauges I have a boost gauge an EGT gauge and also over here I have an oil pressure gauge all these gauges will be necessary for the future upgrades that will be occurring in this car where I am getting a larger G GTB turbo uh, and intercooler system to boost this thing up from the stock, uh, I think it's 90 horsepower or so. With the proper tuning map and uh, other components, I'm going to be pushing around 250 horsepower, 300 foot-pounds of torque. And uh, we'll be keeping track of the mileage on that too. Uh, in the case with the diesel engine, when you increase performance, you definitely increase efficiency. I'm actually looking forward to hopefully four to five miles per gallon increase over what I'm getting now. Right now, I'm getting between 45 and 50, like I said, depending on towing of the trailer or not trailer or how I drive. So it does, the mileage does vary quite a bit. So those are some of the modifications that I've done. You can see the Euro style headlights I put on there. I've also got some LEDs down here in the bottom. So none of that really affects performance or efficiency. Uh, you can also see I cleaned up the injector area here. Um, I actually put the injectors in parts cleaner, blew them out with high compression air. Uh, that did make a noticeable increase in power also. I also have down in here uh, let's see that little red cylinder there that is an engine coolant heater uh, diesels have a little bit of challenge uh, starting in the winter time especially here in Vermont it gets really really cold I'll see the short shif shifter really like that nice action so check out the uh, the action on the short shifter I mean it's nice right flick it just flicks it's real nice very happy with the action on that so so that's what's going on with the 2000 VW Jetta TDI the Jetti and uh, next step will be the uh, biodiesel system and we'll get some numbers on the hydrogen system and go from there thanks for checking out my video stay tuned for more updates